Senator Ted Cruz of Texas. Senator, I believe that you're there um, in, the, in the Capitol, so thank you for making your way over to the cameras. Um, you've actually argued more cases in front of the Supreme Court, I think, than any of your colleagues there in the Senate. Um, you were very, very much aware of all the Supreme Court nominations of the last couple of decades. Your thoughts today on this opportunity for President Trump to replace Anthony Kennedy? Well, today is really an historic day. Uh, if we look at the first nomination that President Trump made, Neil Gorsuch, it was an incredibly strong nomination. But, but that, at the end of the day, was essentially a defensive pick. It was replacing Justice Antonin Scalia, one of the greatest justices ever to serve on the U.S. Supreme Court. And, and, and what, what the Gorsuch pick did at the very best is maintain the status quo. Uh, the Justice Kennedy vacancy, on the other hand, it is an opportunity to really have a, a profound impact on the court, an impact on the court and that, that, that could last for decades. And, 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 and I think there is no issue more important, no issue more fundamental to what President Trump has achieved, to what the Senate majority of Republicans has achieved, than nominating and confirming principled constitutionalists to the Supreme Court and the federal courts who will uphold our rights and, and protect the Bill of Rights. I, I remember when Chief Justice Rehnquist passed away, and the liberals, they weren't too concerned about President George W. Bush nominating a conservative because it was replacing a conservative with a conservative. The stakes here are considerably higher for um, conservatives and liberals, um, Republicans and Democrats. What do you think from, about, from a strategy standpoint for Republicans, what would be the best way to try to get this through the chamber, and do you favor getting it done before or after the midterms? Well, you know, Justice Kennedy was appointed to the court in 1987, so mm -hmm. 31 years ago. For 31 years, Justice Kennedy has been at the crossroads of virtually every major 5-4 decision from the court for, for over three decades. And, and, and so this is an opportunity. What I hope the president will do is nominate a principled constitutionalist, someone whose number one focus will be being faithful to the, to the Constitution and Bill of Rights. That means defending the First Amendment, defending free speech and religious liberty, defending the Second Amendment, defending the Tenth Amendment, all of our basic liberties. And, and in terms of timing, I expect to see the president come forth with, forth with a nomination quickly, I, I would anticipate, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and I believe the Senate, we will take up, and I believe we will confirm this nominee before the election in November. I, I expect that we'll have confirmation hearings in all likelihood in, in September or October of this year and confirm a strong constitutionalist to the court. It's probably a good thing that Senator Mitch McConnell has said that you are, everybody's going to have to work in August anyway and certainly going to have to do some double duty. Let me ask you then about the possibility of what issues you think are the most important ones going forward because Judge Napolitano earlier was mapping those out for us. Like there's big issues in front of the court or, because technology has changed. The government is way behind in keeping up with that. What, on, according to you, like, what do you think are the big ones that you want to see settled under a conservative court? But look, the, the, there are issues across the spectrum of practically every issue that you can think of, but nothing matters more th th than the basic approach. Are you faithful to the Constitution and faithful to the law? What the left, what Democrats want to see is a judicial activist court. They want to see a radical left-wing agenda forced on the country from five unelected judges on the court. I, you know, from my perspective, I don't want to see a conservative court. I don't want to see a court that is mandating conservative policy outcomes. I think the place to fight for conservative policy outcomes is where I serve now, the United mm -hmm. States Senate, the elected legislature. What, what, what I believe the American people want to see is a Supreme Court with far greater judicial humility that doesn't view its role as just enacting whatever policy preferences they might have, but simply following the law, enforcing the law, enforcing it as, as written, not acting like, like a super legislature and resolving every difficult issue, but leaving it to the, to the people's elected branches and ultimately the American people to make policy decisions. That's the constitutionalist approach to this. One of the uh, names on the list that President Trump put out um, in, on November 17th of 2017 uh, is one of your colleagues, Mike Lee of Utah. Do you think that it would be easier to get a senator confirmed in this environment, or will that not necessarily matter? I, I think the single best choice that President Trump could make to fill this vacancy is, is Senator Mike Lee. 
Um, I, I think he would be extraordinary. You know, if you look back at Republican nominations to the court, Democrats have batted almost a thousand. Just about every nominee they put up there has voted the way they wanted on just about every single issue. Republicans at best bat 500. About half of the nominees Republican presidents have put on the court have turned into train wrecks, have turned into liberal activists. The reason why I think the best choice that President Trump could make is Mike Lee is because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that Mike Lee would be faithful to the Constitution and Bill of Rights, that he's not going to evolve and turn mm -hmm. into a David Souter. He is going to honor his Senator. commitment.